The topic for today is the cash reserve ratio which is maintained by the commercial bank upon the mandate of central bank. Let us begin. What is cash reserve ratio? Cash reserve ratio is the percentage of cash which the commercial banks have to keep with the central bank. Now whatever lot of cash deposits commercial bank is having a fixed percentage of that cash has to be deposited has to be kept with the central bank and every scheduled commercial bank has to do this this is decided in the monetary policy all the commercial banks have to hold certain minimum amount of deposit as reserves with the central bank so that is the minimum amount the when you when we talk about the cash reserve ratio it's a fixed percentage it is the minimum amount which will be kept as reserves with the central bank now the percentage of cash reserve it is fixed by rbi uh, it is unique it is fixed it is not upon the discretion of any commercial bank okay i want to keep this much percentage the other one will say i want to keep this much percentage it is not like that it is fixed and by RBI, which every commercial bank has to maintain. Further, the commercial banks do not earn any interest on this money. Now, RBI will not be paying any amount of interest on this deposit. This money cannot be used by the commercial banks, neither for lending purpose nor for investment purpose. Now, this money, which is kept as the cash reserve ratio with the central bank, it is blocked for the commercial banks. They cannot use it to lend it to someone. They cannot use it to invest it anywhere. So that is just kept with RBI. If the current rate of CRR is say 4%, then every scheduled commercial bank has to keep 4% of total NDTL in the form of cash with the central bank. Here we take a simple example. Let's say that CRR is 4%. Now, 4% of total NDTL will be kept with the central bank. Now the question arises, what is NDTL? It is the net total demand and time liabilities. Here it means the deposits that are held by that particular bank. Every commercial bank can have different amount of total demand and time liabilities. Now whatever that amount is, of the amount 4% will be your CRR which will be deposited with the central bank. This includes, when we talk about this liabilities, it means the deposits of the general public which the people deposit in the commercial banks. Now, demand deposit, the liabilities of the banks which the bank has to pay on demand like current deposits, demand drafts, etc. I repeat, those particular deposits of the people which are to be repaid on demand, current deposits and demand drafts are the examples. And what is meant by time deposits? Deposits which need to be repaid on the maturity date. The people have to wait for that maturity date to arrive. Only then they will be getting those deposits back. This includes the fixed deposits. So when we calculate the percentage 4% to find the CRR, we will be taking the total demand deposits as well as the time deposits. Next. Let's take another simple example. If Mr. Sharma deposits 10,000 in a commercial bank, okay, then the deposits of that particular bank will automatically rise by 10,000 rupees, which is deposited. Very simple. Now, if say CRR is 12%, then this bank will keep 1,200 because 12% 12 of 10,000 comes out to be 1,200. So, this particular bank will be keeping 1,200 with the RBI, which is CRR. This implies further that the bank has now been left with how much amount? 10,000 minus 1,200 means 8,800 rupees is left with the disposal of that commercial bank. The bank can use 8,800 rupees for lending purpose or investment purpose. This 1,200 is not now the property of the commercial bank. It is to be kept with the RBI. Very simple. Now, how CRR saves the banks from many situations? Let us imagine that there is no such thing like CRR. It is a fictional example that if commercial banks don't have to keep any reserves with the central bank and we proceed in this example that there is nothing like CRR. Now banks earn profit by lending. We all know the more they lend, higher their profits. 
In order to maximize their profits, they resort to maximum lending. It's very simple that everybody wants to maximize its profit. And how are the profits of banks maximized by maximum lending? So there is no thing like CRR and they will be just adhering to lending and lending. They would use major portion of the bank money for lending in order to maximize their earnings. What if say there arises sudden and huge demand for withdrawals from the public? Now in this situation, people come to withdraw the money, but the banks don't have any reserves. The banks would not be having any sufficient funds to repay as there is no CRR. Here comes the CRR for rescue. So this is a situation. In these situations, the CRR saves the banks. RBI fixes the CRR so that the commercial banks would never ever have to face this situation of shortage of funds. CRR ensures that the repayment from the commercial banks to the public shall happen smoothly. So here we saw that if there is no CRR, there is no reserve kept with the central bank. It is quite possible that the commercial banks may face this disadvantageous situation where they have less funds to repay to the public. So we conclude that CRR saves the banks from all these weird situations. Now, how is CRR useful during inflation? When there is inflation time, the government wants that excess money is not available in the country to the people. When there is inflation, everybody spends a lot. People have excess money with them. This is what inflation defines. Now, what is the policy of the government? Monetary policy will direct that this excess money should be consumed from the people. Now, CRR helps us in controlling the inflation. When there are threatening clouds of inflation in the economy, RBI raises the CRR. So, CRR is raised during inflation. Now, when RBI raises the CRR, then what consequences happen? Banks need more money to keep as reserves, obviously. If the rate of cash reserves will be, res will be increased, then the banks will have to keep more money with the central bank. So, they need more funds. The reserve amount will go up. This reduces the money available for the banks to sanction loans. Right? If... Say they had 100 rupees and 4% is the CRR. Then the cash reserve will be going as 4 and 96 should be used for lending. But if RBI raises it to 10%, then 10 will go as the cash reserve and 90 will be used for lending. So on raising the CRR, the money available for the banks to sanction loans also falls down. This squeezes the money flow in the country because the commercial banks won't be lending that much. This reduces the investment because the money flow squeezes, the investment in the country also falls, the growth of the economy is negatively impacted which is very natural because lesser the investment, lesser the growth. But as a result, what happens is inflation is curved. So this is where we started the question from that how CRR helps to control the inflation. So we, we studied that RBI raises the CRR and it is effective to control the inflation. Now, how is CRR useful during the deflation time? Now, during the period of deflation, there arises. So CRR is not only helpful only in inflation, it is also helpful during deflation. There arises a need to pump funds in the economy. There is shortage of cash everywhere. People want more and more money and the government wants to pump funds. To counter this situation, RBI wants to increase the flow of money in the economy, which is already squeezed flow. It wants to expand the flow of money. When there are threatening clouds of deflation in the country, what does RBI do? RBI lowers the CRR, which is actually the opposite of inflation situation. RBI will lower the CRR to combat deflation. Now, when RBI lowers the CRR, what happens? Lowered CRR increases the loanable funds with the commercial banks because once the CRR is lowered, the commercial banks have to keep less reserves with the central bank. Okay, so reserves will be less than the loanable funds will be more. The bank sanction a large number of loans to the business and industry for the investment purpose because now they have quite enough money as the CRR has gone down. 
this increases overall supply of money in the country which was the objective of monetary policy to increase the supply of money this will in turn boost the growth of growth rate of the country because more investment will increase the growth rate therefore deflation is controlled so this is how we learn that crr helps to control deflation now another prime function of crr is to ensure liquidity against the deposits see we study that as from a bank's point of view a bank shall earn profit by lending money which is known to everybody the more it will lend the more profits it will earn right to earn maximum profits the bank may lend out maximum funds in order to have more and more earnings as a result it may be left with very little cash with them as we studied in the previous slide imagine a situation in which there comes an unexpected mad rush of clients to withdraw their deposits in such a case banks would be unable to meet the repayment needs okay because there is no, uh, as we discussed in the previous slide the imaginary situation when there is no crr how will the bank meet the pay repayment needs therefore crr is very significant to assure that there is always a certain fraction of deposits in each and every bank kept safe now when every bank shall maintain the required crr the overall liquidity in the economy will be maintained every bank will have its own liquidity each bank will have adequate amount of cash no bank will ever fall short of funds this is definitely a good advantage for every bank so this crr puts each bank in an advantageous situation ensuring that there is full on liquidity against the deposits now what is the impact of crr on interest rates if rbi increases the crr automatically the banks will have low lending capacity and less loanable funds because it has to maintain higher reserves banks will allure more and more people to open accounts in the banks and banks will be desiring more deposits from the public now because please try to understand because there will be less loanable funds with the banks due to the increased crr now banks will be capturing more and more people so that more and more people come and open accounts and the deposits of the banks will increase okay so banks will raise their interest rates now the borrowers will be discouraged to apply for loans as in interest rates are now high everybody who goes for to borrow money has to keep in mind the interest rates if the interest rates are higher they will be discouraged from borrowing so the crr also has the impact on interest rates here we come to the end of the article i hope i have made the things very clear and simple to you please subscribe to my channel you can ask any doubts in the comment section if you want to thanks for watching stay safe stay blessed